Janma yasya yato nibiyad itaratas charte su vigyaswara Janma yasya yatamba yaritaratas charte su vigyaswara Tene Brahma hridaya adhikavaye muyantiyat surayaha Tene Brahma hridaya adhikavaye muyantiyat surayaha Tejo varimadam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha Tejo varimadam yata vinimayo yatra trisargo mesha Damna svena sada nirastaku Kuhakam satyam param di mahi Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead O all-pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth And the primeval cause of all causes And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world, which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravocha. Dharma projita kaitravocha. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shivadam Tapo Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parer Ishwaraha Kimba Parer Ishwaraha Sadhya Hridi Avarudyate Tra Sadhya Hridi Avarudyate Tra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Yeah, the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadev in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. Muhur aho rasika bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish shimad bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for although, all, although its nectarine juice was already relishable for including all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Eliyantak Sto. Hi Bhadrani, 
Vidunati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati naistiki in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. From the devotees he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo badayas chaye. Kamalo badayas chaye. Cheta etar anavidam. Stitvam Sattve Prasidati By development of devotional service by development of devotional service of the Lord um, and by development of devotional service, one becomes fixed and uh, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes free from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the signs of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Siyante jasya karmani. Siyante sacha karmati. Trista evat manishvare. Trista evat manishvare. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus the bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables us to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna from his devotee in Krishna consciousness. One can understand the science of Krishna. One can understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 18, verse number 23. Aham hi pristo yayamanao. Bhavad beer. Aham is presto yamano bhavad he. A chuck sa atma bagamo trayavan. A chuck sa atma bagamo trayavan. Naba patant atma samam patatrinas. Naba patant atma samam. Tata Saman Vish Nugatim Vipashita. Tata Saman Vish Nugatim Vipashita. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Kije. O Rishis, who are as powerful, uh, who are as powerfully pure as the sun, I shall try to describe to you the transcendental pastimes of Vishnu as far as my knowledge is concerned. As the birds fly in the sky, as far as their capacity allows, so do the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Absolute Truth is unlimited. No living being can know about the unlimited by his limited capacity. The Lord is impersonal personal and localized. The Lord is impersonal, personal and localized. By his impersonal feature is all pervading, Brahman. By his localized feature he is present in everyone's heart. 
As the, super, as the supreme soul, and by his ultimate personal feature, he is the object of transcendental loving service by his fortunate associates, the pure devotees. The pastimes of the Lord in different features can only be estimated partly by the great learned devotees. So Srila Sutta Goswami has rightly taken this position in describing the pastimes of the Lord as far as he has realized. Factually, only the Lord himself can describe himself and his learned devotee also can describe him as far as the Lord gives him the power of description. Srila Prabhupada Bhattita Bhavan Kije. This is uh, a statement of the humility of a devotee. A devotee uh, as opposed to a Mayavadi or an impersonalist or a demon does not assume that he or she can know everything about Krishna. Why? Because Krishna is unlimited, ananta. There's no limit to his glories, his pastimes, everything about him, there's no limit to it. So we are limited, even if we're liberated, we're still limited because we're only a part and parcel of the Lord, we're not the complete Lord. So when we hear a statement like this which says that um, it says, factually, only the Lord himself can describe himself. That's an important statement because this should ring a big bell in our mind. Ding! Bhagavad Gita is Krishna speaking about himself. So what would be better than that? If you want to know who Krishna is, you must read and not just read, you must hear from bona fide devotees <clears throat> like Srila Prabhupada, this Bhagavad Gita, because this is Krishna speaking about himself. Who knows Krishna better than Krishna himself? So here it says, factually only the Lord himself can describe himself and his learned devotee also can describe him as far as the Lord gives him the power of description. So, any ability that we have is coming from Krishna. This is also stated. Rasoham apsukonteya pravasmi sasi surya pranavas arvedesu vedesmi purukshapara. So, in the seventh chapter, eighth verse, this is an interesting statement by the Lord. He says, Rasoham apsukonteya, I'm the taste of water. And Pavasmi Sasi Surya, the light of the sun and the moon. And then he says, Pranavasarva Vedesu, and I am the syllable Om in all the Vedic literatures. <clears throat> and Sabde K Purusham Nrisu, I am the sound in ether and ability in man. So therefore, uh, Sutta Goswami says that. Uh, and so the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. So uh, this is a, a, a correct statement that we are part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, it's impossible for, for us to know everything about Krishna, but we can know the main things. And that is summarized somewhat in this verse and purport, but I wanna go deeper into this subject today. So, Prabhupada says that, uh, see, if you hear Bhagavad Gita from a pure devotee, and the purest devotee we know in our direct experience is Srila Prabhupada. That's why we're studying his translations and his purports to Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and so forth. Well, there's a certain thing about connecting, just like an electrician. He, can, he knows how to connect things so the flow of electricity goes unimpeded. And Prabhupada knows how to connect things so the flow of realization of Krishna is connected. 
everything is connected to Krishna because Krishna is everything. Everything is not Krishna, but Krishna is everything because everything is made of Krishna's energy. So this, we have to understand what that means. And today we're going to go deeper into that subject. So Prabhupada says, by cultivating these limbs of knowledge, so there are 20 limbs of knowledge, Manit, Vamadamit, Mamahimsa, Santar, Arjavam, so Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, 8th to 12th verse. So by cultivating these limbs of knowledge, one attains self-realization. In other words, one is elevated from mundane knowledge of the chetra, meaning the field of activity, the material nature, and the body, to spiritual knowledge of the chetra gya, the knower of the field. So material science and material philosophy is only concerned with the chetra, the 24 elements. And they're gross elements and they're subtle elements. So they get into the subtle elements also, but a uh, very sketchy way. And that's the limit of their knowledge. But wait a minute, there's a whole other realm of, of knowledge and, and that's called spiritual knowledge. They ignore that completely. Therefore, anyone who is educated today in schools is cursed. The word, correct word is cursed to remain incomplete in everything they do in their life. Every relationship, every accomplishment, it'll all be for naught. Now, we have an example right in front of our eyes. We have President Trump. Now, President Trump did a lot of materially amazing things. But it was all nullified by a little virus and all these people that hate him. So, you see, that is the nature of the material world. If you work, if you work with only material knowledge, and what is material knowledge? You need economic development so you can have sustained sense gratification. That's what it is right there. That's the whole purpose of going to college and going, getting a good education and passing your SAT test and all that stuff. It's to make money so you can have sustained sense gratification. But what is the outcome of that? Zero. It's all going to be taken away from you. And you start all over again. You can't keep any of it. There was one king, Muslim king, in Delhi, and when he was going to die, he had a special casket made with two holes in it. Everyone said, well, you know, I mean, the whole purpose of the casket is to protect the body from insects and other things so they don't eat the body. Why do you want two holes in it? He said, when I die, and you take my, the hearse with the horse and buggy with my uh, casket, I want to have two holes in it. So I want, to stick, I want them to stick my arms into the outside of the hole so people see when, I, when I'm dead, I went with nothing in my hands. So what did the Muslims do? They go, Allah Akbar, and they hold their hands out like this. <laughs> so why are they holding their hands out there? Because they want something from God, you see. So he's saying, I want you to see my hands when I'm dead, that I have nothing in my hands. I went with nothing. See, he was a very smart man. Of course, nobody got the message. Uh, they thought he was crazy, you know. You don't want to have a hole in the casket. The bugs will come in and eat your, uh, eat your body. But the bugs will come in and eat your body anyway. They'll come in from your body itself, right? So anyway, here uh, we see that this material knowledge, it's a curse because what will happen with material knowledge, you'll be struggling the rest of your life. Because there's a struggle for competition. Just like if you have a garden, you'll see there's a struggle for, of competition. Because the bugs and the, and the uh, rabbits and the deer and vi viruses and mold, they're all fighting for the food. You have to protect your garden from all these things. And you can't do it completely. Every farmer knows they're going to lose between 5 and 10% of their crop to animals, to insects, or they can lose the whole crop to drought or to disease. And so, so therefore, that's, there's a struggle for existence. And by getting this only material knowledge, you go right into the throes of that struggle for existence without getting out. The whole, whole life you're just struggling. 
you have to pay the bills. You have the, somebody gets sick, and then and then uh, there's an accident, and uh, your uh, your house blows up because the uh, propane tank was leaking, or because uh, there was a gas leak in the neighborhood. You know, it's every day there's something going wrong, and there's a struggle. You see. That's what material knowledge curses you to stay in the struggle and never get out of it. Right up to the moment of death, you're struggling. Who's going to get the inheritance? I can't trust my, my, this son. The second son's okay. The, my daughter, she's a nonsense. She married this uh, drug dealer. And, you know, it, it's a mess. All the time, there's a struggle. So, Prabhupada explains here. <clears throat> Yeah, he says that we have previously established that the word chitragya implies both the living entity and the supreme Brahman, or Krishna. Sometimes material nature or prakriti is referred to as Brahman. The reason being that Brahman is the cause of the material nature. In one sense, a cause and its effect are identical. But Lord Krishna is the ultimate source of Brahman. The Lord impregnates Brahman in the form of the material nature with the seed of Brahman known as the jiva. So this word Brahman can mean several different things or three or four different things according to the context. The real meaning of Brahman is Krishna. He's the source of everything, the Brahma Jyoti, the Paramatma, the material nature, the jivatmas, everything. So he's the supreme Brahman. But then sometimes the material nature the entire material nature, the Mahatattva, is referred to as Brahman. And sometimes the jiva is referred to as Brahman. Okay? So you have to understand the word Brahman in the context that it's used. See, this is one of the principles of Sanskrit. You learn the alphabet. Then you learn grammar. And then you learn context. The context is very important. It's as, it's as important as the letters and as important as the grammar. Because you can make a major mistake by misinterpreting the context. Context means what is being spoken of at a particular time in a particular place. And it can refer backwards to things that have already been discussed. So you have to be able to, to understand the context. OK, so here it says, in one sense, a cause and its effect are identical, but, the Lord, but Lord Krishna is the ultimate source of Brahman. The Lord impregnates Brahman in the form of the material nature with the seed of Brahman known as the jiva. So you see, right there, explains that Brahman can refer to the Lord himself. He's a fulgence, the jiva, or the material nature. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mama Yonir Mahat Brahma. Tasman garbam the damyaham, sambhava sarvabhutanam, tato bhavati bharata. So this is Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter, third verse. The total material substance called Brahman. So here Brahman is referring to Mahatattva, the total material substance, right? Is the source of birth. And it is that Brahman that I impregnate, making possible the births of all living beings, O Skyan of Bharata. So right there, is the defeat of all material knowledge. The people that think there's only matter, there's nothing else, right there it's defeated. Because in this verse, three things are explained by Krishna. One is the total material substance, the Mahatattva, which is called Brahman. And it, it's the source of birth in the material world. But Krishna says, it is that Brahman that I impregnate making possible the births of all living beings. So the only reason the material energy looks animated is because Krishna impregnates the other Brahman called the jiva into the material nature, which is also called Brahman, right? And Krishna is also Brahman, he's the supreme Brahman, right? And there's also the Brahma Jyoti, right? So we see, we need to understand context just as much as the, the alphabet, the grammar, the meanings of the words, etc. 
This verse explains the famous saying, Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma. Okay, now this is an electrical connection now. Prabhupada just connected this verse to the Vedic verse, Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma, which is one of the most misinterpreted verses by the Mayavadis. So now he's defeating the Mayavadis just by doing this. See, only a pure devotee can do this. No common uh, mundane scholar is able to do this. And that's because they have misconceptions. They have material desires. Therefore, they cannot explain things correctly. So Prabhupada is like the supreme electrician. He's connecting everything. Now he's going to connect different verses of the Bhagavad Gita to verses from the Vedas to, uh, and all that to Krishna. Only he can do that. Just like we have a machine downstairs. It's called a steamer uh, convection oven. And I ordered it uh, because they have one that's single phase, 120 volt. So we got the machine. It's down there. You can see it in the, in the uh, hallway. And, but it says triple phase 240 watt. Now, I called him. I said, what's going on here? I, mean, I, I ordered single phase. You know, if, 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 if you send me a triple phase, it's going to cost us four or $5,000 to convert our, our, our uh, electrical box to triple phase to 40 volt. They said, no, 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 no. If, if you have an electri electrician, he can internally adjust it to be single phase 120 volt. I said, what? He said, yes, and, and they sent me the plans. Now, I looked at the plan. You have to be a, a professional electrician to understand it because there's so many wires in it, you know, and you have to reconfigure all the wires, right? So <laughs> here we see uh, one single machine can go from triple phase to a single phase. You know, you don't need a second machine. They, they figured this out because their they're, they're, they're company has been around a long time that some people want triple phase, some people want single phase. So instead of making two different machines, they made one machine, but you have to have an expert electrician who can change the wires and make it into a single phase. So in this way, we see the Prabhupada is a transcendental electrician. He wants the natural flow of Krishna Kata and Krishna uh, Tattva to, to, throw, to, to, to show you that it's going through all the different verses of the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita and the Vedanta Sutra and the Mahabharata and the Srimad Bhagavatam, and it's all talking about the same thing, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, if you deal with these uh, half-baked scholars, you call them, uh, just like they say, uh, uh, Bir Hakim Khatrejan, and half doctor is no doctor, right? So if you deal with these half-baked, half-educated people, you don't see the flow of the electricity going from Krishna through everything right up to Srimad Bhagavatam. You don't see it. But when you connect to Prabhupada, Prabhupada knows how to connect everything because everything is connected to Krishna. The only reason we think things are not connected to Krishna is because we've been dumbed down by modern education and been dumbed down by impersonalists and other people who hate Krishna and therefore they've purposely misinterpreted the Shastras. So here Prabhupada says, one second, he says, this verse explains the famous saying, Sarvam Klavidam Brahma, from the Upanishads, meaning everything is Brahman. In other words, the Supreme Brahman, Lord Krishna, is identical with both the Jiva and Prakriti in that they are all Brahman. Thus, in one sense, the Vaishnavas are pure monists. Wait a minute. That means that we outdid the Mayavadis. We're more oneness than they are. You see? Now, this is amazing. Only Prabhupada could do this because he's a pure devotee and he understands uh, after many, many, let's say, lifetimes, uh, he understands perfectly the Shastra. And, and without connection to Prabhupada, we are lost. We will we'll make so many false assumptions by reading the Shastra. So he says, thus in one sense the Vaishnavas are pure monists. Previously, we deliberated upon another verse from the Bhagavad Gita 9.10, 
My Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Satcharacharam. He Tanani Lakontiya Jagat Vipari Partha. So now he's connecting Bhagavad Gita 14.3 to the famous Mahavaikya of the mon monists of the of Mayavadi is called Savam Klavidam Brahma from the Upanishads. Now he's coming back to Bhagavad Gita, connecting the previous two to this third verse. Maya Dakshina Prakriti Suyate Satcharacharam 9.10. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Prabhupada says, this Gita verse under discussion, 14.3, gives a clearer understanding of the other verse, 9.10. Now, wait a minute. Could you have figured this out? How many years have you been reading Bhagavad Gita? Years. Did you know that 910 is connected to 143? No. <laughs> well, I have to tell the truth. I didn't either. <laughs> you see, so this is why we have to hear from a pure devotee. You know, we have to hear from Prabhupada every day. Because every day we're going to discover something new. Something that we thought we knew, but we don't know it. You see, this is our problem. We don't know everything, and we have to have the same humility as, as Sutta Goswami. He says, as fur birds fly in the sky, as far as their capacity allows, so do the learned devotees describe the Lord as far as their realization allows. These are very significant statements. Very, very significant statements. Now, I'm giving an example how we... We, we got our Bhakti Shastri by studying, or, or we, we took the Bhakti Shastri course and studied Bhagavad Gita. But did you know that verse 9-10 is connected to 14-3, and both of them are connected to Sarvam Klavidam Brahma? Oh, you didn't know that. Did they teach you that in Bhakti Shastri class? <laughs> you see, this is the problem. We should never think we understand. There are so many things that are going to be revealed to us little by little as we become more and more purified, more and more surrendered to the service of the Lord. So that's not all. Now Prabhupada says, to shed more light on the meaning of the Upanishadic aphorism, Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma, we cite a verse from the Vishnu Purana. Now he went from the Upanishad to Bhagavad Gita, and, and then again to Bhagavad Gita, and now he's going to the Upanishad. And then now he's going to the, uh, uh, again, to the Upanishads. And he's in another verse in the, uh, I'm sorry, the Puranas. Now he's going to the Vishnu Purana, 122.56. Esa desa sitasya agnir, josna vistarini yata, parasya brahmana saktis, saktis, tate dam akilam jagat. Now I've, I've, read this verse many times, I've memorized it sometimes, I forgot it sometimes, I came back and memorized it again. But I never knew any of these things that Prabhupada's talking about right now. As fire radiates light all around, although remaining, remaining in one spot, similarly the Supreme Brahman radiates energy everywhere, which is manifested as this material world. Now, Prabhupada continues. In their philosophical discussions, the Mayavadis deny the existence of the Supreme Lord's multifarious energies. Such substandard debates are indeed on the kindergarten level. <laughs> right here, he nullified Sankaracharya, Sarilak Bhasya, and all the speculations of the Mayavadis. He just nullified it right there. Mayavadis have a poor fund of knowledge and are thus prevented from understanding that the Supreme Brahman is full with six opulences. To save these poor Mayavadi impersonalists from philosophical impoverishment, Lord Krishna has mercifully instructed them in Bhagavad Gita 719. Now, here we, you see the, how the energy is flowing, the electricity is flowing, right? It went from 14.3 to Sarvam Klavidam Brahma to, to 9.10 and then to Ekadesa Stitas Yagnir Josna Vistarini to Purana. And now he's coming back to Bhagavad Gita again. Brahm, 
Brahmanu, uh, he says, Brahma, uh, he says, uh, uh, seven nineteen. He says, Bahunam Janmanam Ante Gyanavam Mam Prabhupadyante Vasudeva Samamiti Samahatma Sudurma. I mean, you all know this verse, probably all can recite it, right? But did you know it's connected to Sarvam Klavidam Brahma, to Egadesta Stitas Yagni, to Maya Dakshina Prakriti, and to uh, Maha Yonir, uh, Mama Yonir Mahad Brahma. Did you know that? Did you know that, Prabhu? <laughs> did you know that? You see, did you know that, Prabhu? I didn't know it either. Right? But we're learning it now. As the saying goes, a tethered cow goes as far as the rope. See how poetic Prabhupada is. Now he's bringing in an English proverb. Now what does this mean? It means a cow that's tied up can only reach as far as the length of the rope goes. It can't go beyond it. Right? Similarly, one who uses the inductive method to search for ultimate, ultimate knowledge will fail. Now, just, he just crushed the Maya bodies again. They only use deductive knowledge, deductive uh, process. They don't use, I'm sorry, they, don't, they only use the inductive process just like the scientists do. Now, if you know the difference between inductive and deductive, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Shrestha knows the difference. You want to explain the difference in inductive and deductive? Come, come over here and explain. This is what we study in the children's class. Actually, children's class is the advanced class. <laughs> Everyone says, oh, I don't have to go to children's class. <laughs> so I know all that stuff. Believe me, you don't know anything. We don't know anything. So the inductive method of understanding knowledge is basically what they now call the scientific method. So you you begin with a guess, and then you use your imperfect senses to come up with Observation, right? observations to support your guess. Observation and experiment. Yeah. Right. That's then, the inductive process. Yeah. The deductive process of understanding knowledge. The correct deductive, yeah. the spiritual deductive. The spiritual deductive process is where you begin from the Vedic truths or the Vedic aphorisms and you deduct based on that knowledge. Yeah, exactly right. So for example, uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, Jagadish Chandra Bose, most famous uh, scientist in India, right? First Indian to ever get a Nobel Prize. <coughs> So, no one else ever thought of this. He wanted, he showed that human beings, animals, plants, some metals, all have the same uh, reaction to stimuluses. And this is brilliant. And that means that not the, the the real meaning of that is that they all have a soul. They're not actually dead, like the the Christian Church says. Animals don't have a soul, and of course, plants. If animals don't have the plants, don't have them either, right? He proves that they all have souls, and even some metals and rocks and things like that. He proved it scientifically with the experiment. Now, why would he? Why no one else ever tried to experiment like that, and he did. Because he had access to Vedic knowledge. And he started from the a priori, self-evident truths of the Vedas. Prabhupada said, that is real scientific experimentation. You, you begin with the Vedic knowledge and you deduct from it. See? So you use a deductive. In other words, for example, you say, man is mortal. Now you can deduct things. I know this guy named John. Therefore, John is mortal because he's a man. Now, is that true or false? You see? So, you didn't have to experiment. You started with something that's true, and then you deduct from it. Deduct means you, you, you understand that, that if, if, if all men are mortal, John is a man. That's a deduction. Therefore, John must be mortal. There it is, right there. 
You don't need. You didn't need to experiment. So the the, the Vedic process of knowledge is deductive knowledge. You begin from the truths of the Vedas. Now, material deduction is you you get a guess and then you deduct from it. You say, uh, I see a duck walk. But there's this idiot that lives in my neighborhood who walks just like a duck. Therefore, he must be a duck. So he goes and asks. <laughs> so he goes and talks to the guy. He says, can you go quack, quack for me? He said, what, are you crazy or what? I, I, what do you mean? But I, I think you're a duck because you look like a duck. You know, I'm using deductive. Uh, no, he, he says, that's not deductive. That's deductive. <laughs> so you see, uh, they begin with a, a, a hunch, a guess, and they try and deduct. Well, it doesn't go very far, right? Because right away they'll see that it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't explain reality, right? This, the neighbor is not a duck, even though he walks like a duck, right? So, but on the other hand, if you begin from the self-evident truths of the Vedas, then you'll, you'll be able to deduct, and everything you deduct, you'll see actually exists. Okay, so... Prabhupada says here that as the saying goes, I'm going to be a little long today because this is 1st of uh, January, so we should have some uh, wisdom on the 1st of January that will guide us through all the vicissitudes, all the changes, surprises, upstarts, and everything in 2021. I don't want to say Happy New Year. Just like we all said, Happy New Year 2020. Look what happened. <laughs> so if I say Happy New Year, it doesn't really mean anything, right? But if, I, if we begin with new realizations of the Bhagavad Gita, that could mean something in this new year, right? Okay, so a tethered cow goes as far as the rope. Similarly, one who uses the inductive method to search for ultimate knowledge will fail. That means everything you're learning in elementary to graduate school, it's going to fail. You don't believe me? Just look at history. In history, you'll see all these great philosophers and scientists and politics, they all failed. They all died, and everything they did was basically zero. Okay, so... His attempt is futile because one cannot know the super, super mundane with mundane with a mundane mind. Complete comprehension of the absolute truth is impossible with an unholy demoniac mind. When one is possessed of a demoniac mentality that tries to reduce the supremely omnipotent personality of God to impersonal Brahman, all so called philosophical debates will fail to discover the realm of absolute knowledge or the truth about the non-dual substance. Vaishnavas alone are eligible to cultivate such knowledge. Of course, not all the impersonalists are demoniac. Whoa, he just turned the corner again. Not all, the, all impersonalists are demoniac. And we've said that before. We've said that there are many impersonalists who are demons and atheists. But there are some bona fide impersonalists, and we gave examples like the Kumara and Sutta Goswami and so forth. So here it says, <laughs> Prakshit Maharaj also. Uh, it says, but not all impersonalists are demonic. As soon as an impersonalist realizes that the absolute truth is a person endowed with all transcendental qualities, he immediately begins to serve him. This is confirmed in the Srimad Bhagavatam 1.7.10, which states, now, now we're going to the, one of the most famous verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Atmarama verse, that I have to frankly say I have not understood. Uh, I've, I've read it every once in a while. You know, Lord Chaitanya gives, you know, 60-plus uh, interpretations of it. Uh, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, the greatest scholar of all time, in India, who's an incarnation of Brihaspati, the, the, the head priest of the Devas, he could only give nine explanations of it. Lord, Lord Chaitanya gives over 60, right? But 
reading all those things, I, I always have been puzzled about what is this verse saying? Although it sounds simple. It says, uh, all different varieties of Atmaramas, those who take pleasure in the Atma or spirit self, especially those established on the path of self-realization, though freed from all kinds of material bondage, desire to render unalloyed devotional service unto the personality of Godhead. This means that the Lord possesses transcendental qualities and therefore can attract everyone, including liberated souls. That's the translation of the verse. So now he's connected this verse to Bahanam Janmanamante, to Sarvam Klavidam Brahma, to Ekadesa Stitas Yagnir, to Maya Dakshina Prakriti, to Mama Yonir Mahad Brahma. So you see Prabhupada is number one electrician. Yeah. It, it seems like you can, you can connect, you can, if you think deeply, you can connect all the verses in one verse. I mean, it means that each, uh, each verse is complete. Each verse is pointing to the same yeah, absolute each truth. Each verse is complete because Krishna is absolute. So each verse his statement is complete. Yeah, one time this is uh, Professor Schenick, he was a French guy. He had a meeting with Prabhupada in Paris. After he came out of the meeting, he said, oh, your guru is all wrong, you know, he doesn't understand anything at all. And the devotee said, well, why is that? You know, why do you say that? He said, every verse in Bhagavad Gita points to Krishna. I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this guy's a scholar, right? By the way, he couldn't read Sanskrit. He could only read the transliteration of Sanskrit. Right? He was a nonsense guy. I, I knew him. And, you know, he was <laughs> and when Prabhupada was told what he said, he said, ah, oh, now he has understood my mission. <laughs> to connect everything to Krishna. Everything is connected to Krishna. It's just the Maya body has got it all scrambled. And it takes years. Once you scramble something, it's... It takes years to figure it out and put it back the way it should be. Go ahead. No, I, want you, I just want to make that point. Yeah. That actually, if each verse is complete in the philo philosophically, each verse, especially in Bhagavad Gita, I mean in Bhagavad Gita too, that the one verse can explain the whole philosophy. See, like the, the first verse to the Janma Siyajata, everything is there. Yes. And then each verse actually is complete. Haribo. I, I have not realized that yet, but I, I, I trust what you're saying is true. <laughs> so now he connects this Atmarama verse, which is the most, just about one of the most famous verses in the whole Bhagavatam, to all these other verses. And Prabhupada says, it is rare to find that great, that great soul who is attracted by the Lord's transcendental qualities and thus surrenders to him. Now, why am, I, why am I talking about this? Because I got a phone call from someone the other day who was a Ritvik. But he's a good friend of mine. He's a very good friend of mine. And he always calls me up every once in a while. And he comes to the temple every once in a while, maybe two or three times a year. But he's a nice man, right? But he became a Ritvik. So I told him, Prabhu, I said, look, don't you realize you're wasting your time going from one project to another to make money. And this, this is a waste of time. You always talk about Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. Why don't you surrender completely to Prabhupada, give up all this nonsense that you're doing, and just uh, preach and have faith that Krishna will take care of you. So Prabhupada said, don't, don't speak so loudly. My wife is listening. You know, I, I don't want her to hear this because uh, you know, I really want to do that, you know, but I can't say that in front of her because she'll get all upset. And uh, he said, well, I really want to do that. I said, well, then why don't, why don't you do it? Well, you know how it is. Uh, we've got, still got some kids, and uh, it's, it's not that easy. I said, yes, it is that easy. He said, well, I am trying to preach. I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I, 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 uh, sometimes I invite some people over, and I preach to them. And there's one guy who's really interested now, and he, he's, uh, I'm teaching him the Bhagavad Gita, and he's really, really interested. And he, he even chants one round. I said, Prabhu, 
Prabhu, I said, you've become a guru. Don't say that. Don't say that. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. I said, but that's what guru is. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. Because he's a ritvik. See, he says, only Prabhupada is a guru. <laughs> I said, you've become a guru. He said, no, stop saying that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you see, they can't, it's because that's a false philosophy, right? But they can't stop themselves from acting like a guru. I explained to him, if anyone who repeats the words of Krishna and Acharyas correctly is, and, and is a guru. And you know, they don't want to hear that word. You know, they say, oh, only Prabhupada is a guru. You, you see how crazy, absolutely crazy people are. Even the ones that chant Hare Krishna, as long as they have a misconception in the mind, they're crazy. You know? So here it says, it is rare to find that great soul who is attracted by the Lord's transcendental qualities and thus surrenders to him. But that's the whole point. Sharanam, complete surrender. That's what Prabhupada did, he completely surrendered. That's what all of us did when we first joined the movement in the early years. We had to completely surrender, not do anything else, but just preach and chant and, and dance and so forth. Prabhupada said, this dancing is also scientific. <laughs> the only person who can surrender to the Supreme Lord is one who does not attempt to rob him of his personality, but who views the material nature as a transformation of his multifarious energies. Thus, the Mayavadis can never be called Mahatmas or great souls, only when they realize that the non-dual absolute truth is none other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full with six opulence, can they be called Mahatmas. Vaishnava Mahatmas have explained the aphorism Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma in this manner. The philosophical school no, no, known as Vashista Advaita propounds the idea that the Supreme Lord eternally exists with his two principal potencies, the Chit Shakti, the spiritual potency, and the Achit Shakti, or material potency. Now Prabhupada has gone further. He's connecting Ramanujacharya to the Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma, that was misinterpreted by the Mayavadis, but now he's giving Sankaracharya's explanation of it, which is the Vaishnava explanation. And he's connecting that to Atmarama verse, to Bahanam Janmana Mante 719, to Ekade the Vishnu Purana, to Maya Dakshina Prakriti, uh, 910, 910 Bhagavad Gita, and to Mama Yonir Mahad Brahma 14.3. So I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> this goes on. There are more connections coming. We can discuss them tomorrow. But see, this is the free flow of the electricity, unimpeded. Unimpeded. Uh, only an expert can do it. Just like an, only an expert can reconfigure the wires of our machine downstairs from three phase to one phase, right? Only Prabhupada can connect everything to Krishna because he's a pure devotee, Haripo. All glory is the Prabhupada ki Are there any questions? As we see, as we were explaining, and as we see Prabhupada's, um, because right now we see everything each versus. We see um, everything separated. Separated. And then there is still. Um, I guess the lack of clarity on how all the connections happen and then the big picture is not there. Yes. I think whereas Prabhupada, for him, he was able to see the, everything from the top down. If you come to class every day, you get the big picture. <laughs> but it takes time because the big picture is really big. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the supreme absolute truth. It's not a, it's not a trifling thing. It's, a, it's really big. So we have to regularly hear. And every day, something new is going to appear in our mind that we didn't realize before. We know it all, but we didn't realize it. Yeah. We're, we're blessed. But, blessed. Said, uh, but only by his causeless mercy, actually, we can understand. Yes. By, by, I, I came in by hearing, and then he reciprocated. Right? Oh, this person is coming every day to the class. Just like okay. when Prabhupada was met his guru in Vrindavan, I think it was 1933. Uh, they, were, 
there was an evening darshan going on in a room, and many of the God brothers were there. And then someone interrupted it before Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati spoke, and he said, "We all can have this rare parikram tonight of the seven major temples of Vrindavan. Who's up for it to come and and go from temple to temple during Arti time?" So almost everybody got up and walked out. And, but Prabhupada didn't walk out, and maybe two or three sannyasis stayed. And Bhakti Siddhanta looked at Prabhupada and said, this boy is very interested in hearing, therefore I shall instruct him. <laughs> so we should be really anxious to hear on a regular basis. And it reciprocates. Yeah. As you surrender, I reveal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How is dancing scientific? Do you want to know? <laughs> well, there, there's this famous guy called Arthur Murray in uh, in America. He tances, he used to, this is the 1940s and 50s and 60s, he used to tan, uh, teach ballroom dancing. So if you want to know, you have to come and take the course. <laughs> Don't you keep on dancing. <laughs> <laughs> keep on dancing. We'll teach you, we'll teach you the Prabhupada two-step. That's the, that's, that's the basis of the science right there, the Prabhupada two-step. Swami steps, of course. Yeah. Swami we'll teach you. You have to surrender completely, and then we'll teach you. Yeah. <laughs> surrender to hearing regularly, then you'll learn how to dance scientifically. Hari Bol, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The payment for learning is coming regularly to the class. Then you will learn how dancing is scientific. No other way. No other way. You have to pay for it, Prabhupada. 